Hi everyone, it's Andrew Nagel of Alk9 Designs again, and instead of a tutorial this week, I kind of wanted to do another talking point for you all and readdress something that I had talked about a couple of months ago, which was social media marketing. Um, there's definitely been a couple of changes over the last few months since I did that last video, and I've changed a few things that I'm doing as well, so I thought I would share those all with you to help you grow, you know, your networks on social media and to help you find new clients and stuff. And so, um, first off, I know it can be completely exhausting keeping up with all of the new tips and tricks and all of the new ways that a lot of these um, platforms work, especially like Instagram ever changing with the new Reels um, feature and you know with just kind of the direction that marketing is going on those platforms. It's not, you know, it used to be like long posts used to do really good and now that's kind of shifting and they still do good but it's not so much like the words you use and stuff anymore. But. We'll just dive on into all of these little details and I'll share with you all what I've been doing to help um, boost my social media platforms over the last couple of months. And so, um, I guess a, a good place to start is what makes a good post in the first place and this is kind of universal across all of the platforms. Um, you know, a lot of the platforms utilize photo or video with the posts as well and so that's always a good thing. That's not to say that just a text post wouldn't do well, that does do well on things like Facebook and Twitter even, but um, those aren't even my main advertising spaces anymore, and so, y you know, like, photos and videos are kind of like where advertising is going, especially leaning more towards the video creation side of that. Um, and so when you're creating a post, if you're utilizing a photo or a video, you're going to want to make sure that those are good content, those are good photos, those are good videos, those are, you know, not blurry, there's good lighting, there's good bright colors in them. Um, you know, a lot of jewelers will go back and forth about whether or not you should edit your photos before posting them. I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with editing your photos, um, just so long as you're not drastically altering like the color or the clarity of the gemstones so long as you're not you know changing like the finish on your pieces or something so long as you're not altering it in that aspect you can definitely make the photo more eye-catching definitely brighten it up to kind of showcase your gemstones a bit better and stuff and so um and then same thing with your videos too if you're utilizing videos to post on like instagram and stuff like that um, and then as for the text part of the post, what seems to do better is posts that add value um, to the post or to the people who are viewing the posts. And so if you're doing like educational content or things where you're like explaining like the locale or kind of the sourcing of your gemstones or your materials, that ch that tends to do better than if you're just kind of posting a piece and you're saying, here's what's in it and that's that. Um, you know, that's why I've tried to do a lot of like themed pieces or pieces that kind of have like a meaning behind them or, you know, have like a really unique gemstone in them or something. So that way there's kind of like a story behind the piece as well. And then you can tell that story along with showcasing your piece. Um, and... And so in regards to actually creating content, when and how should you go about doing that? Um, when you have the energy to. <laughs> I wouldn't say, um, you know, anything forced is not worthwhile and anything rushed is not worthwhile. So if you're rushing to make a post and then post it, don't do that. If you're, you know, trying to get a post out by a certain time and you don't have it together, just wait and maybe do a different time that day or something like that, you know. Um, you want to put thought and effort into your advertisements. That's what you really should look at them as. Um, so what I do is when I have the space and the time and the thought process to do it, and when it just kind of comes up naturally in my day, I'll either make the post for the next day or for that day and then just save it in my drafts. You can do that on Instagram and a couple of other platforms. I know you can do that on like TikTok, um, but mostly Instagram. You can do that with reels and your regular posts. And so just, you know, make those posts when you have the time to and when you have the mind frame to. And that's going to create better content, which is going to thus drive more clients to your pieces. Um, and set up a time to post. And so that way you kind of have a bit more structure. You're not just posting willy nilly and just whenever. Um, that doesn't mean that you should post every single day at that time It's always good to take breaks and to maybe take like the weekend off from posting or something like that um, Or a couple days here and there when you don't have anything new to showcase or something like that um, 
but I just try to be a bit more structured in how I'm putting my advertisements out there so that way it's not just, you know, randomly thought up and just a, a random photograph that I took in a couple of minutes, you know, put a lot of care and thought into the creation of these advertisements and they'll do better for you. Um, and again, it's not about how frequently you post, but more so about the um, value that's in your post and, you know, posting good content. You don't just want a bunch of posts that are doing really bad because then your future posts are going to do bad as well. You want posts that are doing good so that way then your next posts do better. And so if you can't think of something, just don't worry about it that day and focus on creating so that way you have something new to showcase your, to your audience. Um, the, um, the apps will reward you for content that keeps people engaged um, with the platform. So again, if you're doing like, if you're asking like questions that people can answer, if you're, you know, again, like prefer providing educational things that keep people engaging or asking questions about that post, then that's always going to do better than, like I said earlier, if you're just kind of showcasing a piece and saying, this is the piece and this is what's in it. Um, and so a lot of the platforms that I use are pretty much all of them. <laughs> um, I use Instagram, I use Facebook, I use Reddit, I use Tumblr, I use Twitter, and I also use TikTok here and there. Um, TikTok I've seen some decent growth on, but it's not exactly the best for translating that growth into sales. Um, and I think that's kind of just based around like who that platform is kind of geared towards. It's geared towards more younger people who don't generally have the money for pendants and jewelry and stuff. Jewelry is more of a luxury item and you're going to want to be gearing your markets towards people who are in the, you know, the, in the place in their lives where they are looking for those, those accessories and things that are, you know, not just what like a younger audience is going to be looking for. And so, um, that's why I use Instagram a lot more because there's a lot more people that are, kind of in the, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s on Instagram, and then Facebook is kind of like the older generation as well. Um, Reddit is kind of a good wash of people, you know, there's younger, older people on there as well, and then um, Tumblr and Twitter is just kind of like random as well in that regard too, and so I don't post on there as often. Um, but starting with Instagram, that's my main platform for posting, you know, content, posting new pieces trying to get people to come to the Patreon and stuff like that. Um, they announced uh, about, you know, shortly after I had made the last social media video for you all, they announced that they are moving away from photos and they're moving more towards videos and reels. And so that's going to be their platform. They're trying to really kind of um, compete with TikTok in that sense. And they're doing a good job at it in, in my mind. Um, so you can still use photos to post on there and to showcase pieces throughout the day, but I would get into the habit of posting one reel, you know, six days a week or something like that. I know that sounds like a lot and it can be a lot to create those and to post them, but doing that is what gained me the most growth on Instagram since they've implemented that feature. Um, I did tell you all before that I've seen like less hashtags work and I have seen that also be true in the reels case there's been some videos where i did no hashtags and they did better than the ones with hashtags but then there's been ones with hashtags that did better so you know you just got to kind of see um what's going to work for your post if you're trying to get onto new people's pages i do think hashtags are kind of the best way to do that because those are basically keywords that those people might be searching and so that will push your video into their page um Facebook has been kind of dying a slow death. <laughs> um, less is more on Facebook, and what I mean by less is more is not necessarily a shorter post, but maybe less of a frequency of posting on Facebook. I used to be doing it once a day, you know, six days a week, but now I'm seeing that they're really, you know, the posts on Facebook are doing better when it's new pieces, when it's new content, not when it's older things. Um, so. I've even seen like using new photos of old pieces is not doing as well as it used to. Whereas like a new photo used to kind of always be the key. Um, and so when you're posting there, you don't only post to Facebook when you're like showcasing the new things that are eye catching and that are going to draw a lot of interest to them. Um, Instagram is great for sometimes showcasing like multiple photos in one post. I mean, Facebook can be good for that too, but at least for myself, I've seen Facebook do better with like one photo instead of like eight photos. 
Um, but that, again, just depends on the post and your audience and, you know, how your audience has been engaging with your content thus far. Um, Reddit is almost like a massive wash of Facebook groups. There's the Reddit front page, and then there's a bunch of subreddits. There's some jewelry-specific subreddits. There's also some jewelry-making-specific subreddits. Um, and so if you are going to start posting on there, just search through the Reddits and see which ones kind of fit for what you're posting. And so from you know, for us, it's like jewelry, um, crystals. There's a bunch of different crystal pages and some gemstone pages. And so... It, it's been a decent space to grow my clientele, and I've even found some of my higher-end clienteles through the platform, which is kind of weird. Um, I have also found some success posting into other subreddits that aren't necessarily for jewelry. Um, I've also been kicked out of those subreddits, but then again, I've had posts on those subreddits hit the front page and do really well, and so it can be kind of wild in that sense. Like you never know what's really going to go, go well. And you might get banned from a couple of subreddits for posting your pendant, which wasn't supposed to be there. And that kind of leads me to that. Um, when you're posting on there and other platforms as well, you've got to have a little bit of a thick skin because there can be some really rude people on those platforms. Reddit, I've seen kind of the worst about it, but you just can't let that sort of stuff bother you. you just got to go about your day and then, you know, find the best places to post your content. And that'll, you know, not being on those other ones will kind of help push you towards the places where you're supposed to be. And so you just keep posting and finding the new pages and you'll find new clients and grow your following there as well. Um, Tumblr and Twitter, I post on these kind of the least often, especially because Twitter's kind of like they, it's really more for like short one sentence posts and stuff like that. It's not really like an, an engaging platform in a prolific sense. I'm not saying that Instagram and Facebook are, just I've seen a bit more of like prolific type posts do better on those platforms, whereas Twitter's just kind of like short and sweet, what are you saying, and get down to the point of it, and that's that. Um, but I have seen some good, decent growth for artists on Twitter, especially in like the digital realm. Um, so it's definitely an interesting space to, to keep an eye on, but I wouldn't try and utilize it as your main source of advertising. Um, both of Tumblr and Twitter can be connected to your Instagram account, and so you can post directly to those from Instagram. I don't do that all the time because usually my Instagram posts are too long for Twitter. Twitter has a much shorter character cap. You can't, you can't write out as long of a post. Um, and so I don't always do that, but Tumblr, I don't believe has a post limit or it, it does, but it's like very similar to Instagrams. And so, um, a character limit, excuse me. And so oftentimes I will just send my Instagram posts over to my Tumblr page just cause it's quick and easier. And again, I've just kind of started growing my Tumblr audience. But what I've noticed is that if you're just consistent about posting and new things, and again, using hashtags to push your posts onto new people's pages, then you will start gaining new followers and stuff. It hasn't correlated to any sales yet, but I mean, neither did Facebook and Instagram at one point. And so you've got to start building your platform or you've got to start building your audience on these platforms somewhere. And it will just continue to grow if you keep posting and creating valuable content that people will engage with. And so those are some of my social media tips. Those are some of the things I've been doing over the last six months. And so, yeah, again, eye catching photos, try and um, get your posts in front of as many different people as possible and you'll start seeing new clients come in. My other suggestion is to have a website if you don't already or an Etsy maybe. The way that I use social media is that social media is kind of like the advertising that funnels clients to the website and so my website links are all over my social media and so that way people can just like link in bio click on that thing or whatever you know it's kind of annoying saying that you, you sound kind of cliche but I mean if your links in your bio you might as well direct people to it and they'll click on it and go to your site um, if you have a website you can also generally track where you, the traffic to your site is coming from and so lately I've been seeing the most traffic coming through my Linktree site addresses and so Linktree is great for having multiple links and then you can just have the one Linktree link on your social media. There are other platforms like Linktree where you can create kind of a landing page full of like 10 different links and then you just have one link to that landing page and you put that on your social media. That seems to be the easiest way to direct people to multiple different links or like multiple different social media platforms or different channels if you have them. And so, yeah, thank you all. I hope that was helpful for you and I hope you have a great day.